All right, everyone, uh, I welcome you all to the call. Can you please confirm if I'm audible and visible to you? Uh, either you can unmute yourself or... Yeah. Yes. Okay, thank you, Shreya. Uh, I'm sharing my screen. Let me know when it's visible. Okay, guys. <clears throat> It's visible. It's visible. Thank you. Sir. Great, great. All right, guys. So I welcome you all to the orientation session for the performance management paper, where we will be looking through the entire uh, performance management paper as a whole. We were, we will also be discussing some syllabus and exam related aspects, along with how to plan and prepare for your upcoming June 2023 attempt as well. And of course, uh, the questions that you may have is also welcome. We will definitely be discussing those uh, close to the end of the sessions as well. So uh, just keep them, uh, keep them either in the, uh, keep them posted in the chat box or, uh, you know, during the live Q&A session, you can unmute yourself and ask me as well. So till the time being, just uh, keep your videos turned off and mic uh, muted so that, you know, we can have a wonderful session. <laughs> So uh, just a brief, brief introduction about myself. I am Vishnu Vijay and I am a qualified ACCA. Uh, I have been uh, teaching students uh, for, on the papers PM, APM, AA, as well as AAA for the past uh, few years now. And I'm also a full-time uh, auditor in one of the big four firms uh, as well. So uh, let's talk about as to what this paper is all about, shall we? So what is the performance uh, management paper all about. So when we talk about performance management, it's basically, uh, you know, there are a lot of students who come to me asking if, if this is a, you know, uh, does it involve calculation? Does Is, is it a theory paper, etc. But what I would say is it's, it's a 50-50 paper, as in 50% of it is theoretical aspects and the other 50 is all calculations as well. There is a great deal of calculation, yes, but that's not the only uh, you know, important factor that is there within this particular paper. Because if you have to understand those calculations, you need to understand the theoretical aspect of it as well. And that's kind of the, uh, you know, uh, kind of the nature of what the PM paper is all about. So understanding the concept is really important, not just, you know, learning the step-by-step -step calculations and stuff. And uh, the theoretical aspects, uh, try to, try to uh, you know, understand what each and every aspect is, be it the technological aspects or be it the logical aspects as well. And I would say, you know, uh, from an overall perspective, I would say that it's more of a logical paper. Okay, folks, this particular paper involves a great deal of logical thinking and decision making as well to a certain extent. And if you're someone who has already started with this paper already, then uh, I'm pretty sure that you already know what I'm talking about as well. So, uh, let's get started, shall we? Let's understand as to what the syllabus of performance management is all about, first of all. And of course, other than that, we will also be discussing about the exam structure, time and location, and how to prepare as well. <clears throat> so, what is the performance management paper all about? And what is its uh, syllabus area? Let's understand that, shall we? So, the syllabus uh, syllabus of performance management is partitioned, partitioned into six syllabus areas. We have part A, which is, I would say, the one of the easiest uh, syllabus areas out of, you know, all the others. Uh, it's basically information, technologies, and systems for organizational performance. Now, just to give you a brief idea here, this particular syllabus area is completely theoretical. Okay, folks, there's no calculation. There's not much calculation over there. It's, it's completely theoretical. And uh, the objective uh, for learning this particular paper as a whole, not just the syllabus area, but the objective of learning the performance uh, management syllabus as a whole is so that you can understand the methodologies in which you can improve an organization's performance. So as a, let's say, management accountant or business analyst in the industry, how exactly can you improve the organization's performance? And what are the you know, tactics and methodologies that you can use to do that? That's, that's basically what this paper is all about, just to uh, give you a brief uh, idea about that as well. And of course, uh, technology is a really, really hot topic nowadays, isn't it? So technology is being implemented in various areas. Uh, in order to improve a particular organization's performance. So what are those technologies and what are those uh, you know, systems that are there in order to enable the organization to perform well and achieve 
the organization's objectives. That's what the syllabus area is all about. And then we have syllabus part B, where we look at specialist cost and management accounting techniques. So when I talk about specialist cost and management accounting techniques, there, these are some costing methods which you have to learn uh, uh, for the uh, for the exam. Where uh, you know it, it's all about you know how exactly do you determine a cost of a particular product, and you know how exactly should you be thinking of uh, determining a cost for it. That's that's basically it. That's there. There are several methodologies for that. There are several factors to consider for that particular aspect, and that's what you will be learning in syllabus part B. And then there is a uh, part C, which is decision making techniques. And this syllabus area is like the most logical part, okay, folks. Because if we are, you know making any decision for that matter in your, uh, be it in your career, be it in your education, et cetera, there are a lot of factors that we need to consider, right? So there are a lot of informations which which needs to be available to you. And there's a, a, you know, logical way of thinking through certain scenarios. That is exactly what you will be learning in this particular syllabus area. There are a lot of, you know, uh, techniques and analysis, such as CVP analysis and stuff like that, which you will be learning. It's, it's quite interesting if you think of it logically. And then uh, we have part B, which is budgeting and control, uh, you know, setting targets and achieving them. That's basically as to what the syllabus area is all about. And then we have part E, which is performance measurement and control. How do we perform, sorry, how do we measure the performance of an organization and how do we control them? How do we improve them? That's basically what we will be discussing in part E. And finally, there is part F, which is a common syllabus area in all of the ACCA papers, and it relates to employability and technology skills. So uh, this is basically, it, it, there's nothing to learn in this particular syllabus area. Uh, it's more of a skill that you need to develop just to attempt the ACCA uh, CBE exam or the PM CBE exam. That's basically all there is to it. And it's some basic skills or basic knowledge about the spreadsheets and word processor, or in other words, how exactly do you navigate through the CBE platform? How do you present your answers? All these stuff. That's basically what part F is all about. And, you know, this is something that we cover uh, within our, our revision bootcamp while practicing questions as well. Okay, folks. So uh, just to, for the people who have already uh, purchased a course, just to give you a brief overview, uh, we will be covering the entire syllabus, like 100% of the syllabus it, through the video lectures, the, you know, lecture sessions that you have. And uh, for the skill related aspects, such as question practice, how do you navigate through the CBE platform? How do you present your answer in a CBE platform? All those things will be covered within your revision bootcamp. So just to, you know, give you a brief idea about that structure as well. Now, that's basically all about the syllabus of performance management. Now, moving on to the next aspect, that is <clears throat> the exam structure. So what is the exam structure? How will the questions be tested in your PM exam? Let's understand that, shall we? So when it comes to the PM exam, there are three sections that can be tested. It's a three hour exam, first of all, uh, you know, nothing more, nothing less. And uh, there are three sections in your exam. Section A, which contains multiple choice questions or MCQ. And we have 15 MCQs, each carrying two marks. So section A will have, uh, will have a total of 30 marks. Okay, folks. And then you have section B, where we have the objective type questions or OTQs. And for the OTQs, we have you know three OTQs available. And what is an OTQ or what is an objective type question? It's basically a small scenario and five MCQs in relation to that particular scenario. Okay, folks, that's basically as to what it is. And uh, you know, again, multiple choice questions, and you know, this, this, there are three uh, three OTQs, each carrying ten marks. Uh, we have a total of thirty marks available in section B. So as you may know, a majority of marks are from the, you know, are, are for, you know, uh, providing answers to multiple choice questions. Okay, folks, so nothing uh, theoretical in section A and B, as in, you know, uh, there's no nothing to write in or type in in section A and B. It's all multiple choice questions. And, uh, you know, there are some, you know, fun ways to answer in questions like drag and drop and stuff like that as well. There, there are questions like that as well. Uh, 
And then we have section C, where we have constructive response questions or CRQs. And these are basically the case study questions. You will be given a scenario and some requirements in relation to the scenario, which can be both calculation as well as uh, theoretical stuff, uh, theoretical aspects as well. Okay, folks. So each CRQ, we ha you have two CRQs in section C, and each will carry 20 marks each. And that gives us a total of 40 marks. So 30, 30, and 40 will give you a total of 100 marks. Okay, folks, that's basically as to what the exam structure of the PM paper is all about. So does anyone have any questions regarding this particular aspect? Then uh, if, if there is, then feel free to, uh, you know, unmute yourself and ask, or you can also uh, use the chat box as well. <clears throat> Vishnu, uh, hi. Yes, right. Yes, right. So, what are the constructive uh, response questions? Like, I might have missed this part because objective okay. I, I know and MCQ is okay. also not aware of. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, it's basically a complete scenario or, or of a particular organization. And they'll say that, you know, there are some issues regarding certain things. And uh, there would be some requirements in relation to that. Or in other words, there would be some questions in relation to that particular scenario. Okay. And uh, you, it's not an it's not a question where you select options or anything. You will have to type your answers within uh, an Excel sheet or uh, or a or a word processor as well. Word processor as in uh, MS Word. That's basically it. So you just have to type your answer in either theoretically or in a calculative manner as well. That's that's basically uh, how these questions are. And of course, you can definitely you know find them in the revision boot camps as well. It's it's uh, it, there are a lot of questions over there as well. Hope that answers uh, your question, Shreya. Yes, it does. Thank okay. you. Okay, sure. Thank you. Moving on uh, to the next aspect. I hope there are, aren't any other questions. Okay. Yeah, moving on to the next aspect, that is time allocation. Now, there's a reason why we are looking at the time allocation at this particular point in time where we are about to start with the, uh, you know, with the entire you know course uh, the reason is that you know along with learning the syllabus practicing questions is also a really really important aspect and in order to practice questions you need to understand the time you have available to answer a particular question as well which is why we are discussing the time allocation right now at this point in time okay folks so just gonna zoom it in there we go <clears throat> So usually there's an easy recommendation to use 1.8 minutes per mark. And uh, if I were you, I would take up a bit more of a conservative approach as well. That's kind of my you know strategy for these kinds of exams. So uh, what I would do is I would just assume 1.5 minutes per mark and keep the rest as buffer time. That's that's basically something that I would uh, you know plan on. And uh, for the structure. Uh, for each of the structures, we need to have a certain time allocated, isn't it? So for MCQs, as in for section A, as well as for section B, I would take up a total of, it's a three hour exam, remember that guy. So uh, out of that, I would take up one hour and 45 minutes max, max to uh, complete both section A and B. And for section C, it's kind of a bit of a different story there since it's a case study question. <clears throat> For section C, for each 25 mark question, sorry, for each 20 mark question, I will be allocating 37 minutes, okay, folks, for each of them. And out of these 37 minutes, seven minutes will be allocated. The first seven minutes will be allocated for reading and planning the particular scenario. And so, uh, yeah, as I was saying, in section C, for each of the 20 mark questions, we'll be taking a total of 37 minutes. And out of these 37 minutes, the first seven minutes will be allocated to learning, sorry, uh, reading and planning. Okay, folks. And uh, what do we do in these seven minutes? Let me explain about that as well. For the scenario, the case study questions, the first thing and first and foremost thing to do here is to read the requirements. Okay, folks, what exactly is needed by the examiner? Let's first of all understand that. And secondly, we read through the scenario as a whole to understand what is the big picture, what is the organization, what are the issues there, what are the points that we have to create for our answer. We plan all this. And finally, uh, we make a plan as to how to structure our answer as well. 
safety folks. So this is what we do in reading and planning. We read the requirement and then the scenario, and we plan the structure of our answer. <clears throat> and for the remaining time, for the remaining 30 minutes, we type in our answer within the CBE platform. So that's basically how you can, you know, allocate time for a 20 mark question as well. Just like that, you have two 25 mark questions, simple as that. So that is basically the time allocation strategy for the PM paper. So I would highly encourage you, encourage you guys to adopt this particular, uh, you know, time strategy while practicing questions, both the, uh, you know, uh, be it the uh, MCQs or be it the section C questions as well. Try to become a bit more compatible with the strategy because, you know, trying it the first time you, you do a particular question, it may take maybe an hour rather than 14 minutes or 37 minutes. However, you know, with practice, you can, you know, reduce, you can a bit be a bit more efficient. Okay, folks, so that's basically uh, the whole idea behind uh, the time location strategy. So try to practice the questions, try to become compatible with the strategy so that you can, you know, completely finish the exam uh, within the allotted time. Okay, folks, so that's basically the uh, idea here. Now, moving on to the next aspect. So how do we prepare for the performance management exam? Let's uh, talk about that, shall we? So preparing for the performance management exam, it's uh, kind of this kind of this particular framework is kind of applicable for all the other uh, ACCA papers as well. It's just a step by step process. OK, folks, step one is to learn the syllabus and revise continuously. And when I say learn the syllabus, I mean learn 100 percent of the syllabus. Don't try to expect what can come up in the exam and just learn that because that's a, a you know common mistake that most students make because we, we can't really predict anything but you know people try to uh, you know become astrologers by assessing the past paper questions and stuff like that but uh, I, I wouldn't really encourage that that's a big mistake so try to cover everything try to learn everything that is there within the performance management uh, syllabus first of all and then revise it continuously so you have like uh, maybe three months for the upcoming June exam, right? So you do have enough time to do that. And, uh, you know, some of you may be working professionals as well, but still, I can say that you still have enough time to uh, do, uh, you know, learn the complete syllabus as well. So try to learn it completely. And if, uh, let's say that if you have, if you are done with learning the syllabus uh, in, let's say, the first month, then... In the second and third month, then try to try to revise through it. Okay, folks, revise through what you've learned as well, because that's also really important. Because uh, otherwise, what's going to happen is when you attend a particular scenario, the, the right knowledge won't come to you at the right time. Okay, folks, that's basically a common issue as well. So learn the syllabus completely and continuously revise. It. Okay, folks, maybe allot uh, on a daily basis, try to allot maybe one, one and a half hours to just Revise through what you've learned in the previous uh, a few days as well. Okay, folks, that's something that I would uh, highly advise. Now, moving on to the next step, we have step two, which is to practice, practice, and practice questions. Okay, folks, practice as many questions as you can. As you can. Okay, folks, be it MCQs, be it the case study questions. Try to practice or get in as much as much practice as you can because. Practicing question is equally important to learning the syllabus as well. Because while learning the syllabus, you're just acquiring the knowledge. That's basically it. But, you know, uh, in order to apply, uh, you, you know, to build up a skill of dealing with scenario, you will have to practice a lot of, you know, exam standard question, I would say. So uh, where do you get that? Obviously, there's a lot of questions within your uh, revision bootcamp. There, there are exam standard questions as well as past paper questions as well. So do have a look at that. And then there are also these uh, exam kits, such as Kaplan or BPP exam kits as well. So try to practice those uh, exam kits as well. And then we move on to step three. Okay, folks, only after doing that, we move on to the next step, that is do the question papers or past exam papers, which is available within the ACC's website as well. Okay, folks, that's a really important resource to uh, that you need. You definitely need to look at so that you can get a better understanding as to what a exam level or an exam standard question would be. Now, moving on to the uh, next uh, step, that is to read the examiner's report. 
So what is the examiner's report all about? Or what is, what is this resource all about? Let's, let's understand that first of all, shall we? After each and every exam sitting, the examiner will issue a report stating as to what exactly are the uh, strengths and weaknesses demonstrated by the exam candidates in that particular setting. Okay, folks? So it, it'll be really, really valuable if we know that, right? So we can try to understand as to what a uh, really impressive candidate would have done in that particular exam. And uh, we, could, we could identify what are the mistakes that students did in a particular exam setting as well, isn't it? So the examiner's report is also a very valuable report, sorry, really valuable resource that you need to uh, look into as well. And then there is the mock exam, which is step five. Okay, folks, so a mock exam actually increases your chances of passing by 30%. There's a, there's a reason for me uh, saying that. It's basically because, uh, you know, when conducting a mock exam, you will feel that pressure or you get the, you get the exam feeler. Okay, folks, you get, you get as to what exactly would the actual exam be like. Okay, folks, and, uh, you know, uh, when attending... The actual exam after the mock exam, you'll uh, you'll be a, feel a bit more comfortable as well. And more and about that, okay, folks. More and about that, uh, especially for those students who are uh, attempting the mock exam, uh, you know, with us at Fentram, uh, you guys will be getting a, you know, you we will be providing you with the feedback of your mock exam as well, and pointing out the areas which you have to improve or. What are the you know key strengths and weaknesses in your paper, et cetera? All these things would be highlighted to you through a feedback as well. Okay, folks. So that's basically why it is really mandatory for you to uh you know do a mock exam before the actual exam. <clears throat> and finally, step six is basically to go write your exam. Because once you've you know completely learned the syllabus 100 percent and revise it continuously, and once you practice all those exam kit questions and revision bootcamp questions, as well as uh, other exam standard questions uh, as well, and past papers as well, and once you read through those examiner's report and attempt a mock exam, you're completely prepared for the, uh, uh, for the upcoming uh, June 2023 PM exam. Okay, folks. So uh, that's that's uh, this is a this is a really uh, you know it's a step by step process, and each step is really important, okay, folks, because, uh, you know, uh, it's kind of like, you know, how you make a paper plane, okay, folks, if I, if I talk about, you know, uh, the art of origami, I would say, uh, you know, if I have to make a plane out of a piece of paper, then there's a step-by-step -step process that, ha that I have to follow, isn't it? I have to fold the paper in a step-by-step -step basis, and uh, if, what would happen if I, you know, miss out on one of those steps? If I miss out on one of those steps, will I get the end result that is a paper plane? No, not really, right? So these steps are exactly like that. Okay, folks, if you miss out on one, you won't get the end result. So uh, I highly recommend that you follow each step to its core so that you're completely prepared and you can leave the example with a smiling face. Okay, folks, so that's something that, uh, you know, I'd like to recommend as well. <clears throat> All right. Uh, so is there any questions up until now? Anyone? Vishnu, uh, this yeah. mock, mock exams will be like conducted uh, like how much prior to the exact examination date and uh, will yeah. Fintram will be conducting it or uh, like it will be from ACC's website or something like okay. that? Uh, not exactly. Uh, the questions will be similar, uh, will be, you know, uh, some of them would be, will look like the uh, past exam questions as well. But uh, the idea is, here is that, uh, for the June attempt, we are planning to conduct a mock by mid-May or so, so that you can, you know, you have enough time to take the corrective action as well. And it's not like a a, a live exam. You will the questions will be sent to you, and uh, what you need to do is, and you will be given a certain time frame to submit your answers as well. So what you have to do is, you just have to write it under exam conditions, and then send us the uh, mock through and uh, through a particular email, which will be shared as well. And once you do that, I'll review it my, uh, from my end, and we'll share the feedback uh, as well. That's basically how the mock exam works. So it will be done keeping in mind the working professionals as well, right? Because uh, yes, we... yes, which is why which is why the time frame will be you know uh, during a particular week. Because uh, there would be, uh, you know, full-time students, if they uh, have the time, uh, they have, like, 
they always have the time to you know write the exams but for working professionals uh, they may only get weekends and stuff so the time frame will include some weekdays as well as weekends as well so you can you know submit it any uh, any day within that particular time frame <clears throat> sure thank you okay great all right uh now moving on to the next aspect so we learned about uh you know what the syllabus is what the exam structure is and time and location aspects as well as how to prepare as well and now what we're going to do is we're going to plan on uh, we're going to you know learn how to plan for your upcoming exam as well or how to you know we're going to uh prepare like a demo schedule so that you can understand how to plan for your upcoming uh days to prepare for the exam okay folks so i'm just going to share a particular screen one second <clears throat> So let me know if uh, Excel file is visible to you. <clears throat> yes. Okay, great. All right, guys. So we have uh, till time till June 7th, because June 7th is the day of your PM exam. So uh, we have time till then to prepare for it, isn't it? So uh, how do we plan or what is the... Uh, what is the methodology that we can follow in order to plan properly? Let's understand that. Uh, but before that, just give me a minute. Uh, so guys, just confirm this. Uh, my audio is loud and clear to you, right? Or is there any issues in that? <clears throat> yes. Okay. Yes, as in it, it is clear, right? It is clear. Okay. Yeah, okay. loud and Great. clear. Great. Thank you. Uh, all right, guys. So when it comes to the uh, you know, planning aspect, we've already we've already discussed as to what exactly needs to be done, isn't it? We we know as to what uh, what all things should be done to prepare well for the exam. Now let's plan on it, shall we? Let's allocate some you know dates to do these stuff as well. So. I am more of a person who plans from the objective. Our objective here is to pass the exam on June 7th. And therefore, uh, in order to do that, I will have to start planning from the 7th uh, of June. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna, you know, highlight these days. And I'll say that these days are the days on which I will be conducting my last minute preparation uh, you know, stuff like uh, it, it may be, you know, learning through the syllabus once again, rewatching some of some video lectures or uh, revision videos as well. Or it could even be practicing some past paper questions as well. Okay, folks, so there are some last minute preparation that a lot of you uh, would have planned already. So I'm just going to allocate these days to do that. And uh, during the last, during these days on May, from 21st to 31st of May, I may plan on doing my past papers, right? Uh, yeah. So during these days, I'll be planning to do my past papers as well. And before doing my past papers, what exactly needs to be done? Or after doing my past papers or something, uh, we we may have to conduct a mock exam as well, isn't it? So let's allocate these many weeks to pass papers and I would say on 20th this is not the actual date but the actual date will most definitely be communicated to you but just to give you an example uh, I'll say the 20th is the day of your mock exam so I'm just going to plan my pass paper question practice during these days uh, and then before pass papers I will have to uh, I will have to do my you know I will have to practice a lot of questions from my exam kits as well as from the revision bootcamp as well, isn't it? So I'm just gonna allocate some days for those as well over here. There we go. <clears throat> and that's gonna take a while, especially if you are a working professional as well. So I'm just gonna allocate uh, half of this month of April for that, maybe not half till 16th, let's say. And the other half for learning the syllabus as well. Okay, folks. So like this, just start planning from the objective to the present date. That's something that I would advise. We're standing on 25th, isn't it? Yeah. So yeah. So 
from let's say to more if i am you know I, I, if i'm a, a student planning on attempting the pm pm paper then i would start planning from tomorrow uh, uh you start watching, watching my video lectures and maybe study on my own as well as in you know there are my uh i may prepare my own notes and try to refer to them learn from them as well uh and then you know after after that I will do that till the 15th of April. And after that, I'll start practicing my, uh, you know, revision bootcamp questions and then uh, watch the revision bootcamp and then practice the questions in the exam kit or uh, maybe BPP. And if BPP is done early in like, like one or two weeks, then I'll st also start practicing the Kaplan exam kit as well, uh, if I have the time for that. Or, uh, and after that, after 13th of May, I'll start practicing the past papers, attempt the mock exam at 20th, and then, uh, you know, do some last minute preparation from the 1st of June to 6th, and finally go attempt my exam. Okay, folks. So this is just to give you an idea as to how to plan for it. Okay, folks, just to give you a basic idea. You can, of course, create your own plan, because I definitely do understand that all of you guys will have uh, you know, your own uh, commitments and, you know, responsibilities that you have to take up for working professionals, especially. So uh, considering all those things in mind, just try to create a schedule and try to follow them uh, strictly as well. Okay, folks, that's something that I would highly recommend. <clears throat> now, uh, speaking more on the, uh, speaking more on each of these aspects, once again, when I, when I, when I talk about learning the syllabus, I mean, uh, I, I mean, both watching the video lectures as well as, you know, learning the, uh, learning the, learning through the notes and stuff as well. Okay, folks, that's, that's uh, both included with, uh, within that particular section. And when I say practice questions, I don't just mean read through the questions and answers simply. Just try to attempt the question and then, uh, you know, if it goes wrong, if it goes wrong and there's nothing to do about it, isn't it? It may be your first time doing that particular thing. And obviously things, a few questions may go wrong, but try to learn from it. Try to learn from your mistakes. That's basically how we learn here. And uh, for question practice, another thing that I would uh, like to suggest is that for section A and B questions, uh, if you have full day availability, as in, uh, you know, if you are a full-time student, then I would definitely say try to target uh, or try to do uh, around 60 to 80 uh, MCQs per day. And it's kind of easy if you think about it. Maybe you can do like 20 in the morning, 20 in the afternoon, and 20 at night as well, like however you prefer. But, you know, try to target, you know, 60 to 80 questions. That's, sorry, 60 to 80 MCQs. Okay, folks, that's something that I would recommend for a full-time student. And for working professionals, we have, of course, weekdays as well as weekends as well. On weekends, I would target 60 to 80 questions. That's definitely there. However, on weekdays, maybe even, you know, 20 to 40 questions is also fine. Okay, folks, I'm talking about MCQs here, just for your reference. And then uh, we have the Section C questions as well, isn't it? So for 20 more questions like those, you may take around one, one and a half hours to, you know, completely attempt the question and learn from the answers as well. Okay, folks, so uh, I would target maybe two questions during weekdays for working professionals and uh, around six to seven questions during weekends as well. And for full-time students, the same applies as in six to seven uh, section C questions every day. Okay, folks, so that's just a, just a brief plan. Of course, you can increase your plan if you want to, but don't try to decrease it. That's, that's basically the only thing that uh, I wanted to tell you as well. <clears throat> All right, uh, so that's basically to give you a brief idea as to how to plan and practice for these, uh, you know, uh, for this particular upcoming exam. And of course, uh, definitely if you are a FinTram student, then definitely you will have weekly live sessions, you know, where we, we will be discussing about some really interesting fa factors such as, uh, you know, the some exam related tips and tactics, as well as, you know, uh, what what kind of uh, what what kind of methodologies can we adopt to to answer a particular uh, questions? We may discuss technical articles, and if you find some per, uh, a one particular topic or subject to be really difficult or something like that, then we can definitely discuss that in a live session as well. Okay, folks. So that's basically what we will be you know planning for the June twenty twenty three exam setting, and uh, that basically concludes my uh, you know uh you know uh, how to plan a uh, section of the of, of this particular orientation session and of course one last thing to keep in mind is that it's not just about planning it's also about implementing it okay folks there should be consistency in following the plan that you have prepared 
because of course there there would be a lot of uncontrollable factors that could come in and maybe you know maybe you may have planned to attempt uh, let's say uh, you may have planned to watch let's say three video lectures on 29th of march but uh, due to some personal emergencies that that may not have been possible but if you can watch a single one then try to do that and you know there should be at least some progress okay folks we can't just you know leave the day zero which we, we should try to make as much progress as we can and if we if you have to revise the plan then revise the plan as well but uh, i would i would uh, highly highly recommend that you you ensure consistency in following the particular plan till the end Okay, folks, so that's something that I also like to highlight as well. And uh, you may have uh, noticed the tab name as well. It says planning and consistency because planning is not the only important thing. Uh, consistently following it is also uh, equally important. Okay, folks. So, yeah. So that's basically how to plan for your upcoming uh, PM exam. Coming back to the slides. <clears throat> so. That's basically all I wanted to cover from a you know a discussion aspect. So, uh, if you have any sort of questions, then now would be the time to ask, or you can just shoot them in the chat box as well. I see one. Let me just uh, have a look. A tip which you want to give that you applied in qualifying the PM paper. <clears throat> so uh, I've already discussed all the tips that uh, you know I or or how I used to plan or I used to implement during my preparation for the PM exam. I kind of attempted the uh, you know PM exam along with a few others as well since I was a full-time student. I attempted it with, if I remember correctly, I attempted PM with uh, taxation as well as FM as well. So yeah, three three papers in a single sitting. Uh, but uh, you know, it was really, it was really, you know, stressful and it was really difficult. So I wouldn't really recommend it to much people. Two paper is fine, but three is, uh, uh, even for a full-time student, it's, it's a bit too much. I'll uh, tell you that, guys. And uh, when it comes to uh, preparing for that exam, it's just, the, it's just these things. Okay, folks, just, uh, uh, you know, include the, you know, how to prepare steps. That's, that's basically, uh, you know, what I would highly suggest. And, uh, following that thoroughly can can definitely help you. And uh, another thing that I, you know, as I mentioned earlier as well, for the PM paper, it's a logical paper. So try to make sense of things because, you know, if you try to learn just the calculations or just the, you know, step-by-step -step calculation process, there's nothing, you won't really gain anything from that. Okay, folks, because, you know, uh, that particular concept, be it, uh, be it any concept, be it costing, be it CVP analysis, you need to understand why, what that particular concept is and how is it applied in an organization. Otherwise, it'll be a bit, you know, difficult to, uh, you know, uh, get the questions right. So, yeah, just to give you an idea. So, logical papers, so try to, uh, try to understand it, understand things rather than just uh, learning things by heart or something like that. So, yeah. And, uh, you know, speaking about that as well, uh, you're, you're not necessarily required to learn any definitions or anything by heart. I'm not sure how many of you are, uh, you know, are attempting a particular ACC paper for the first time as well. So learning things by heart is not necessary here. What's important is that you understand a particular concept and you understand how to apply that concept in, in a particular practical situation. Okay, folks? So, yeah. <clears throat> anything else, guys? Any other questions? See a few names here, uh, Shivani, Amandeep, Kriti, Mini. <clears throat> yes, Shreya, do you have any questions? Uh, actually, I have a specific question related to some session, like uh, which I've mm -hmm. already attempted for the PM. I've attended the okay. lecture, completed as well. So, great, great. just wanted to know the difference between the uh, ideal standard and the basic standard. I mean, I know the definition, which is already mentioned. Mm -hmm. right, uh, right. Just, yeah. Okay. Uh, just to give you an idea about that as well. Uh, you see, an ideal standard is like the, you know, the top notch target or the most ideal target for an organization as to, you know, where they should ideally be. As in, 
ideally they should be at the top of the market. So what are the, uh, you know, KPIs or what are the objectives or what are the targets that can get them there? That's basically as to what ideal standards are. But if we're talking about basic standards, it's basically the, uh, these are basically a set of standards that are not changed for a long, a long period of time. That's, that's basically the difference there. As in one is the, uh, you know, uh, the ideal set of, targets in the current uh, conditions and stuff, you know, uh, it, it's kind of, uh, you know, to a certain extent, it's kind of impractical to uh, achieve that in most cases, I would say. For example, uh, you know, I could say that, you know, it, it'll be ideal for you to practice, let's say, uh, 99 or 100 MCQs per day. That's the ideal thing, right? However, uh, you know, uh, it may not be practical for some reason if you're a working professional or something, it may not be practical, right? So that's basically the idea here. And when it, if I'm talking about basic sta basic uh, standards, uh, you know, I would say, you know, uh, it's I can't, you know, put it in this particular example, but uh, I would say it's, it's kind of a, let's say it, it's kind of similar to a current standard, but it, it, it's kind of outdated. That's the only issue there. I hope that answers your question. Yes. Okay. Okay, great. So it has not, uh, idle standard has nothing to do with the perfect and imperfect market, right? It has nothing to do with that. Uh, not or... exactly. Not exactly. It's it's more of a budgeting concept rather than economic, yes. you know, concept. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. okay. Thank you. Sure. Anything else, guys? Anything relating to the PM preparation or any generic questions about ACC is also welcome here. So you can definitely ask me those as well. Uh, Vishnu, uh, one question yeah. I had pinged you previously on the uh, on the WhatsApp regarding the uh, mm -hmm. feed forward. Uh, one second, I have to just check. Oh yeah, what I the asked. feed forward thing, right? Uh, yes, I really yes. Escape my mind. So, uh, and uh, there's another. Uh, small thing that I wanted to convey to those who have uh, applied for the course as well. Uh, you can definitely ask the questions to me through WhatsApp as well. But in case you don't get a response, you know, as soon as possible, just try to uh, send reminders to me. Okay, folks, so that I can, now, there are a lot of messages coming in. So I'm, it might get lost. It might, it might get missed out. So keep on sending reminders so that, you know, I can, I can take that up. And uh, uh, Shreya, uh, I can we can definitely discuss that uh, outside this call as well. The uh, feed forward control aspect, right? Yes, so I'll definitely explain sure, it. Sure, sure. Uh, you know, uh, through WhatsApp, so I'll send you a voice note on that. <clears throat> sure, sure. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And another question just came in. Uh, I'm planning to attempt FM and PM for June 23, and I have just started. Uh, second, on the time period. So uh, started. So the time period is enough for preparing for two subjects. Okay, so preparing for two subjects is fine, I would say. Uh, it's just that you won't have time to do, you know, two exam kits. You may only have time to do one exam kit. And uh, yeah, it's definitely possible, you know, uh, and it's applicable for all as well. Uh, you know, all those who are attempting multiple papers at the same time. Two papers is enough. Don't go more than that. I, I highly recommend that you go, don't go more than that. Uh, you know, I have passed my exam setting, but uh, those three, that particular exam setting that which I attempted three papers, I have passed all those subjects, but uh, uh, in that setting itself, but, uh, you know, it was really stressful and, you know, it's it's too much pressure, I would say. So, yeah, any which ways. Uh, coming back to your question, two months, sorry, two subjects is fine and you do have enough time. Three months is just enough time to prepare for that. You have already know as to what is needed to prepare perfectly for a particular exam, right? So try to make a schedule, uh, you know, uh, on your own. Just, uh, you know, try to prepare a schedule, uh, you know, with two subjects by including all the aspects because you may have to watch video lectures and learn the syllabus for both subjects, uh, PM and FM. And then, uh, you know, you may have to practice two exam kits, uh, you know, uh, be it BPP or Kaplan of, uh, you know, each of those subjects. And you may have to practice questions as well. So try to prepare a plan uh, and then, you know, just follow that uh, on a consistent basis. That's, that's basically how you can track two exams as well. 
you can even crack three exams but you know as i've said before it's it's too much because you know uh, especially since since you are attempting uh, pm and fm here both these subjects have uh, you know pm has sorry fm has a bit more technical areas compared to pm but still there's a lot to learn and a lot to practice so i would just stick with two definitely and uh, you know try to try to allocate as much time as possible to practicing questions and taking two subjects is also there's one more aspect as well i'm not sure if you are a working professional or full time student so if you can see that i could speak more on that but yeah any which ways uh if you're a full time student then it's fine but for working professionals uh a professional recommendation would be just to go for you know one paper at a time uh you know from my experience i do understand that you know people especially uh people attempting uh for uh, people who are working professionals you guys do have your work responsibilities and even if you plan on logging out on time that doesn't necessarily happen every time right so i can definitely relate to you on that but uh you see due to these reasons uh you know taking up two subjects could be a risky factor so yeah <laughs> very true <laughs> yeah definitely okay <clears throat> all right guys any other questions we have like 10 minutes more so yeah any and every questions are welcome welcome <clears throat> all right great good to know uh so if there's uh if there's any more questions uh you can definitely feel free to reach out to me yeah Vishnu, one one last question. Uh, sure. Like uh, I'm preparing for a single paper at a time mm -hmm. because uh, as you're aware, I'm working. So right, right. how what time span? Like how much gap should be there between two papers? Uh, like uh, I'm preparing from Feb, so I'm uh, opting for the exam in June. So if I get passed in that exam, <laughs> I I I hope I get. So after that, how much time gap should be there for the next exam? Like I, I will be planning for FM. Uh, FR, FR, sorry, FM. Uh, one second, I just need a, a bit more clarification here. So you're asking me, uh, the time gap between, uh, yeah. It, can you repeat the question? I couldn't really, you know, get the uh, the scenario. Okay. So okay, let's suppose I'm uh, opting for the exam or sitting for the exam in June. Mm -hmm. for a paper like pm okay PM. and mm -hmm. yes so once i have gone through that exam it's passed and then i sh how much mm -hmm. time i should give to the next paper like again three months or four months or i should opt for september uh, you know the sitting exam i hope the next exam would be in september only and then december yeah you can definitely start preparing for the next paper as soon as possible as in you know once you're done with the june attempt uh on Jan june 7th then Maybe you can, you know, for ACCA people, that's that's one of the, uh, you know, really interesting things of being an AC, ACCA student as well. You get a small vacation gap for yourself, uh, you know, when preparing for the next subject. As in, if you're completing your exam on 7th, as in, if you are attempting your June session for PM, then maybe take a break for one or two weeks and start preparing the other one, FM, as simple as that. And, uh yeah, of course, uh, you know, uh, we need to look at the, uh, you know, it, it's really uh, natural to look at the alternative scenario where you don't get the paper as well. But you know, I could I could say that if you have strictly followed all these, you know, preparation aspects, such as practicing questions and everything, then you're good to go. Like, if you understand all the concepts and everything, then you're good to go for the exam. But, uh, you know, if if you miss out on, you know, a particular paper, then I would say you could still, you know, for the September session, you could still attempt both PM and FM together. But even if you are a working professional, because you've already learned everything in PM, right? It's just a few, it's just that you may lack in a few areas. So uh, this is for all those researchers as well. So you could definitely go for two papers, but you know, just make sure that you have enough time to prepare for it. That's something that I would highly, highly, uh, you know, uh, and recommend that you make sure. <clears throat> Thank you. Sure. Any other questions, guys? Oh, I think I have to look at the chat box as well. One second. All right, guys. So I guess that's all for the questions. Moving back to, okay. All right, then. Uh, 
if that's all for the questions, then uh, I guess we can wind up the session. And if you have any more questions, then feel free to reach out to FinFram. Or if you're one of my students, then definitely, you know, you can WhatsApp me as well uh, regarding your uh, particular concern. So thank you so much for attempting, uh, attending this particular session. And I hope it was really helpful for your uh, upcoming uh, PM exam as well. And uh, for your questions and queries, uh, you can feel free to reach out to us through the phone number that is mentioned over here or visit our website, fintram.com. Uh, or you can even, uh, you know, email to us at support at fintram.com as well. Okay, folks. So yeah, thank you so much for attending this session. And I wish you all the very best for your upcoming exam. Thank you, Vishnu. Thank you, Shreya. Bye. Thank you.